Hi. Hi. <laughs> We're back with another video on back our room. upper room discourse series. Upper room basically. Last week we introduced this series uh, in a short video describing how Jesus has a discourse with his disciples, a, a, a chat, and he has five components in this five chat. Five components. Five. One, two, three, four. Eight, seven, nine. And uh, Jesus' aim is to help his disciples have joy and peace in difficult times. So we thought this would be a good series to do at this time. Plus, as I said, it fits with the family reading. So today we're going to be doing the first component. And what color is it? Red! <laughs> Red! And now let me very quickly uh, describe those five components one more time. Here's the diagram again. Uh, but unlike in the introductory video, it's not mirrored. Apologies for that. Um, as you can tell, we're complete professionals here. The, uh, the aim of the discourse, as we said, Jesus is providing his disciples who are left in the world. He's wanting to provide, uh, to let them know that they should have peace and joy and they should be able to continue in his love. Um, and here, here are those components. Uh, the first one has to do with the person of Jesus, who he is. The second one, his plan, what he's going to do. The third one is, is the Holy Spirit, which is about his presence, how he's still with them uh, in power. Fourthly, they have something to be getting on with. This is the practice he's left them to. And finally, uh, prayer. That's always, always there. The provision of God is always at hand. So, Thomas. So. Philip asked Jesus something. He said, show us the Father and it is enough. Remember, Jesus is sitting around the table with these guys and Philip uh, says show us the father and it's enough fire Philip fire. Philip really wanted to sh fire. see the father fire. why do you think that that's true you want to turn around and answer why did Philip want to see the father why do you understand why yeah. what did the, what did Philip understand that the father did didn't Philip understand that the Father had uh, that God was responsible for making the whole world? So, what are the, some of the things that God that God made? Can you point them out in the picture? A pier. Yeah. What did he make? It makes the sun. Yeah. What is that? Is that the what's that? That's the world, is it? Yeah. Do you know where we live in the world? Here. Okay. Yeah. Do you know where, let's say, Danny is from? It's not not far off. What about Vini? Do you know where Vini is from? Here. Yes. <laughs> Pure fluke. Anyway, let's not push your luck too far. What else did God made? God made the water, the seas, and the mountains, and the people. Yeah. And that means God's really big, right? Isn't it? God's really powerful. And God's really big. What else did God do? In the experience of Philip and his granddad and his great granddad and his dad, what are some of the things that they experienced? Do you want to turn around this way and show me in these video in these pictures? What is it? What is this? Can, it's waves. It's waves. It's not far. This is the splitting of the Red Sea. It's also going to get colored in. Making the water first. Making the water. Yeah, actually, Jesus, God was making a way for the Israelites who were running away from Egypt. To flee from the army and to cross through the Red Sea. What else? What about this big city down here? What happened there? Do you remember what happened there? Yeah. What happened? It bricked. All breaking. It all broke. Yes, God knocked down all the walls. It's God's more powerful than these mighty walls of the city. And God was, for decades, a defender, a shield and a refuge for the whole land of Israel as they were attacked by many enemies much more powerful from themselves. So, what does Jesus say to Philip? Philip says, show us the Father. What, is, what, is Jesus, what does Jesus say to Philip? I am in the... Father. And the Father is in... Me. Wow. So, what he's saying, he's pointing to who he is, and he's saying this mighty God is sitting at the table with you. Are you impressed? Shields getting colored in here. So Jesus is pointing to who he is and how he's connected to the Father. That means even though he's sitting there as a man, he is a massive person. And also that they can understand what God himself is like. Because Jesus says, when you see me, you can, you've seen the Father. 
Okay, well, um, I'm not sure that was hugely successful with Tomas, but I am learning. <laughs> uh, let me just kind of show a little bit of my background thinking. Here's my text. I printed it out and I, uh, I highlighted in the three chapters and I highlighted in red to fit with my, my color scheme there. All the bits that Jesus builds this component of who he is into his discourse. And I, re and I think I noticed that he begins by helping them understand who he is. Like they, he tries to comfort them, I think, with this promise of where he's going and where they're coming uh, with him. But the, the questions that they answer, that they ask, don't seem to kind of fit with where he's going. So I think he, he needs to backtrack and help them realize who he is, that they really do know the Father when they know him, that this is about this. They would have an understanding of the Father because of their background as Israelites and because of the understanding of, of creation and all the rest of it. And so he, I think, has to help them understand that this is the one sitting at the table with them. And so that was what I was trying to do with Tomas, with just to try and show some of the, some of the, the visual images, maybe to, to spark an understanding of just how great and how immense, how, how would you say, infinite this very finite looking person is that's sitting in front of them because he's promising them peace and joy and if if he's not like able to deliver then why should they trust him but because he's god they, they can and because that peace comes from without the world said the world and it's not affected by anything in the world they know their hope is not based on anything here anything that can be affected and so that was where i started because i think that's where the text starts it deals for the first while, anyway, at least in chapter 14, of who he is, knowing the Father because of the fact that Jesus and the Father are one. And then it progresses, I think, every time after that, that Jesus talks about himself and the Father. It goes more into the language of love. So I think he's going not just knowing the Father, that they're two together, but that they, and the quality of the relationship that the, that the disciples know that they're not just sitting at the table with God, but they've been walking and be, have been loved by God for the past three years. Like they would have been very aware that Jesus had loved them. How many times he had rescued them out of storms, difficulties when they were squabbling and fighting. He was the one with the wisdom to come in and care for their relationships and help them along. They were very aware that he loved them and they grown to love him too. And Jesus is just saying, do you realize the immensity of the relationship you're in here? This is a love relationship, not with just a man or even just a sort of a prophet type individual. This is a love relationship with the Father, God, the eternal creator, mighty one of Israel. The language of these three chapters using it uses that to help us point, I think, in that direction. It's all about who this is and how closely connected we are to that person. And in conclusion, today is all about who is Jesus. So do you remember what our verse is today? Jesus is there. Jesus is there in a diagram. Do you know what our verse is? Yeah. I am in the Father. And the Father's me. is in me. Very good. We have to know that that guy sitting at the table with his disciples is God, very God. And then knowing Father. and knowing that he has a love relationship with God, with, with us. So moving into next week. We hope that you'll take your text, you'll read through them, and maybe even like I did, here we go, you'll mark this time in green, everything to do with the plan of, of Jesus, how he's going away and he's going to come back. This all has to do with how he's planning to take us with him. So you're going to get your pencils ready, Tommy, and we'll put yet more scribbles on our diagrams. Okay, do you want to say goodbye? Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>